Was Chuggy Bane a once-off? Is Douglas Stewart destined to become a new modern great? To say that young Mungo comes with a certain weight of expectation is an understatement, but that's what happens when you're only the sixth author to win literature's most prestigious prize, the Booker, with your debut novel. So does young Mungo deliver? Thank you to NetGalley for granting me an audio arc of this book. This book feels really familiar. It's set in 1980s Glasgow, and Mungo is a queer 15-year-old boy, the youngest of three siblings. He loves his alcoholic and very flawed mother, which is much to the displeasure of his siblings. His sister provides a better mother figure than his mother does at times. He doesn't have a father, the children grow up in poverty, and Momar tries to pick up men in hackney cabs. And there's even a scene with Mungo and his brother Hamish, or Haha, robbing a warehouse together. It's all a little, Douglas, I liked it and it was good the first time, but I've already read this. Does anybody else think of books like Dominoes? Half the book is spent putting these dominoes down in a nice pattern so that at some point the author can just knock one of them over and set off a chain reaction of beautiful events. With Young Mungo, all the dominoes are in the same place as they were with Shuggy Bane. But then we keep going back to this fishing trip and suddenly you realise that while they may have started in a very similar point, they're very different stories. One thing Stuart does differently is the characters. Mungo's older sister, Jody and his older brother, Haha are much, much more present than Leek and Catherine ever were. They have their own adventures and side plots, and they really add to the complexity of this novel. While Momar is a shadow of Agnes, she's much more of a bit part player. We also have the vivid characters of James, Golgut, and St. Christopher. Golgut and St. Christopher are taking Mungo on this fishing trip so that he can become more of a man. While James is a young Catholic boy, Mungo a young Protestant, and they may be more than just friends. The star-crossed lovers trope runs into direct conflict with the gang violence themes. At times, this book felt like I was reading Graham Armstrong's The Young Team. All the fighting mentioned in this is real-world stuff. There are examples of things that actually happen on a regular basis. Nothing is exaggerated. Catholics and Protestants have a long history of getting on just wonderfully together. You can have your monarch on the throne for 20 years and rule in a reign of terror, murdering and torturing us, and then we'll take our turn for 20 years. It's like cowboys and Indians where the Indians get a turn. Protestants generally support Glasgow Rangers football club. They wear a lot of blue and, as a rule, live in the west side of Glasgow. While Catholics support Celtic, they wear a lot of orange, green and white and live in the east. Now, Rangers and Celtic have this big rivalry between themselves. They're really the only two teams that are capable of winning the Scottish Premier League in a given year. And they are called the Old Firm. And this book being set in the 1980s really does make you think of football hooliganism. It was the Golden Age. Isn't that a horrible term? Golden Age of Violence. But it was the golden age of football hooliganism. Football and religion and violence seems to really go together. And it's a major theme in this book. And it is the reason that Mungo doesn't have a father. Gang violence is not the only dark place that this book takes you. Actually, I, as a little aside, I think that this book would really appeal to thriller readers who want to read literary fiction as well. Young parenthood, toxic masculinity, rape and abortion are all issues explored by this novel too. One of the criticisms, if you like, of Shuggy Bane was that it was almost diet LGBT. And I don't really want to get into that and why that's a problematic thing to say, but it is certainly a criticism that cannot be levelled at young Mungo. There are at least three characters who are LGBT and much more likely five, depending on how you want to slice that cake, which allows Stuart to explore issues in more complexity. The Scottish dialect can be a very difficult dialect for people to follow, but Stuart possesses this unique ability to engross you in the Scottishness of it, yet make it really comfortable and easy to follow even to the most inexperienced with the Scots dialect. He's also kept this era of 1980s post stature depression era Glasgow as his setting, which he does really well. The pacing of this book is probably slightly off. There is a lot that happens in the second half of the book, but not very much that happens in the first. However, as a whole, we can see in Young Mungo Stuart's progression as a writer. 
technically and objectively, I think that this is probably the better book, but it does have a very different gut punch for you at the end. Now, don't misunderstand me. This book has plenty of big moments, plenty of moments that make you just go, I can't believe that happened. But ultimately, for me as a reader, I preferred Shuggy Bane. That's not to say that this isn't a good book. It is very similar in quality to Shuggy Bane, and I've still given Young Mungo five stars. If you liked Young Mungo, I very much recommend Gray and Armstrong's The Young Team. Me personally, I'm going to give Scabby Queen by Kirsten Innes a try next. Ooh.